Jimmer Fredette, Jonathan Tabernari, and Chris Miles, the junior post player for BYU. Darius Gary, the freshman sensation, Philip McDonald. Keep an eye on him. Roman Martinez, Tony Danridge, and Daniel Ferris. Dave Rose in his fourth season, the former Houston Cougar. Now the head man of the BYU Cougars. And look at that record, 252 and 85. He has had some success in Provo on the bench. And a guy who's had success as a player and trying to... Steve Alford in his second season here in New Mexico looking for a home win today. Look at this game today. It's the game in which these teams have began meeting in 1950. 124th meeting and the Cougars have won the last six 16 of the last 20. Yeah, what a red hot environment and if you like your basketball fast and in transition sit back you're going to like this one Wyoming number one in scoring these two are second and third. So BYU will control the ball Jimmer Fredette brings the ball down the floor. First name Jimmer, J-I-M-M-E-R. A lot of times you'd see a Y at the end of the name, but he's got the R. Jackson Emery on the long miss to Reese Gary. The rebound and the run out for the Lobos. Now, offensively, a very structured motion offense. Obviously, Steve Alper, well coached by Bobby Knight. It has many of the same looks, with maybe a little bit more of an NBA feel to it. Ferris guarded by Miles. And Ferris opens the scoring for New Mexico. Uh, and, and believe me, look out. If Ferris is scoring inside, the Lobos will get very open shots at the three-point line. The fans at the pit stand until the opposition scores. Are, are you hoping for them to score so you can see? I, can, I have to stand, too. That's the problem here. <laughs> Jonathan Tabernari doesn't help us out, eh? And the rebound to Roman Martinez. Another opportunity for the Lobos. Doris Gary. Here is Danrich from the baseline. Basket is good and a possible three-point play. How about the keys to the game, Tim? Well, they're, they're very obvious when you watch these two teams play. First of all, JT for three. Tavernari is a hot shooter. And if you make shots, they're dangerous. Also, the speed game, BYU is so fast. For New Mexico, they have to shoot a high field goal percentage and protect the ball. Why? Because if you allow Brigham Young to run, they blow people out home or away. Daniel Ferris with a three-point play. He's got all five of New Mexico's points. Here's Kamard, wide open, Tabernari, three ball. How many times have they said that over the years? A lot for Jonathan Tabernari. That's his 160th career three-pointer. Yep, the middle. Here we go. Tabernari, after the game Tuesday night in Provo, in which they beat TCU, proposed to his longtime girlfriend. What'd she say? Well, judging from the reaction, she said yes. <laughs> McDonald the miss, and here's Jackson Emery. Yeah, with, with Emery and Fredette, they really don't seem to miss Burdock and Murges, Burgess and, and Murdoch as much as I thought they would. That was a great guard tandem to go along with the big man Trent placed at a year ago and playing without them. They have been sensational. And Jonathan Tabernari commits the personal foul, his first. Now, when I call Daniel Ferris tricky in the low post, he's obviously not as good, but he reminds me with his up and unders of Kevin McHale. You know, the, the defense is never really able to set their feet and go to block those shots because he is so up and down and he's very angular in the low post. Ferris from Albuquerque, a hometown boy from El Dorado High School. It's probably a, a hero here. Yeah, there's, so. there's not an NBA team for, for quite a while, so if you play for the Lobos, you approach hero status for sure. One former Lobo is at hero status in the NBA. That's Danny Granger, who has been absolutely remarkable this year. And Tavernari in and out. 
Tavernari played for the Brazilian national team during the summer. Did not qualify for the Olympics. Ferris couldn't connect there. Wasn't Nene on that team from the Nuggets? I believe he was. Yep. And Tavernari gets the rebound. You know, the report was that the Brazilian coach wanted him to play the role of a stopper. That kind of shows how far his game has come along. Four-point lead for New Mexico. McDonald spots up. Rebound to BYU, and a foul is going to be called over the top on Daniel Ferris, his first. And, and let's keep an eye on Ferris now because he has one foul. If he gets two, that's a major problem for Steve Alford. There's a big drop-off once they go to the bench, and I would be surprised if you don't see BYU go right at the big man, try to get that second. And already 6'8 freshman A.J. Hardiman is up waiting to check in at the next whistle for New Mexico. Steve Alford knows he needs to keep Ferris out of foul trouble in this game. Wouldn't be surprised to sit him down even with one right now. Just for a few minutes. Shot clock down to 11. Here's Fredette with the left hand. Throws into a crowd, and the ball lost out of bounds off of BYU. And New Mexico will get possession with 16-17 remaining in the first half. And there goes Ferris to the bench right now, and Hardeman in to replace him. As Steve Alford was looking for an A-plus start, and he's gotten it. He said that BYU, even though they won the conference championship last year, he feels they're better this year because of their outstanding balance. Nifty pass by Danridge. Hardeman couldn't finish. And the ball goes back to the Cougars. You know, Tim, the reason you could make the argument that they're more dangerous this year, last year, Playstead was, was in a... He was an amazing player in the low post, the best post player in the conference. However, when the ball went into him, there was a lot of standing around. Now, you have five offensive weapons on the court at all times. Gavin McGregor has entered the game. Chris Miles has sat down for BYU. Fredette, the pass from Emory, stepped on the line, did Hardeman, and that ball will remain in possession of BYU when we return. 7-3 New Mexico. The pit. One of the great arenas in all of college basketball. Mountain West Conference standings heading into the game today. BYU on top. San Diego State went to Wyoming and lost this week. TCU has beaten UNLV already, but lost to BYU on Tuesday. Utah with a loss at San Diego State. And Dave Rose knows that the battles in conference play can be quite interesting. Conference play is just very different than non-conference play in terms of the competitiveness. What, what do you think was the biggest shocker of those big upsets? Colorado State beating UNLV this week yeah. in Fort Collins. That was the that was the big one. Lee Kamar the rebound off the Tavernari miss. Fredette getting a little closer to the basket, up and under. It's good. Jimmer Fredette, great skills from the guard position, makes it a two-point game. I like that. That was. Uh... That was a little old school George Iceman Gervin going up and a little hang time. Beautiful delivery. Now Danridge missed, and here come the Cougars. Outlet to Kumard from Tavernari. Short on the finger roll, but McGregor there to tie the game. Well, they can run out when they want. High octane. 81 points per game, and it doesn't matter what building, they're going. Gary high off the glass. Quickly, back underneath, it's McGregor looking for help. The, the battle on the three-point line will be very important today. Tavernari gives BYU another tie game at nine. Remember the days when he was a freshman? He was strictly catch and shoot, and he's really expanded his skills a great deal. And Tavernari was the conference freshman of the year a few years back, and here he goes ahead of the pack. Lays it in and gives the Cougars their first lead of the game. But it's not only what you saw right there in transition off the dribble. I like the six rebounds per game. His hands are much better. He's one of the conference leaders in steals as well. Tavernari with seven points already. He is the leading scorer for BYU. Daniel Ferris with seven for New Mexico. Danridge from the baseline hits. Tony Danridge broke his leg last year, had to sit out, got a medical, and returned for his fifth year this year, and he has been a 
a big contributor for Steve Alford's Lobos. Well, and he also is finally looking like he's back to being 100%. Also, I like his defense so far on Kamard. Substitutions into the game now for New Mexico. Will Brown has entered. Chad Toppert, the three-point specialist, and Daniel Ferris back in as well. For BYU, Lamont Morgan comes in to give Jimmer Fredette a breather at the point guard spot. Dave Rose told me this is the most important game for his team all year. I, I said, well, why is that, Coach? And he said, because it's the game we play today. He's got his game face on. <laughs> you know, I've never, ever heard a coach say that before. <laughs> Chad Toppert, watch him when he gets open. He will have a quick trigger. Quick trigger here from Danwich, who's got four points. And the Lobos back in front, 13-11. Jackson Emery, he's a Utah product out of Lone Peak High School. What a great program they have there. Team played in a high school tournament on this floor last year. Here is Tavernari from the corner. Ferris gets the board. And Doris Gary, the sophomore from Elkhart, Indiana, running the point right now. Danrich seems to have a hot hand. Ferris trying to get him the ball again. Yeah, keep an eye on Topper, too, because as they're working inside, it opens up Topper. That's a two-pointer, a long one for Daniel Ferris. Nine points for the Albuquerque native. Lamont Morgan couldn't hold on to it. Doris Gary against Tavernari. Wow. Biggest lead for the Mexico early on at six. And the fans are on their feet again at the pit. Last time you and I were here, we saw New Mexico absolutely blow out. Ole Miss. And this figures to be a high scoring affair there. McGregor with another basket. Yeah, the, the problem with that game, you drop 103 points on an SEC opponent, it elevates your profile. Everybody expects it every game. That one just wouldn't go for Ferris and McGregor with the rebound. They seem like they did everything right that day. 29 assists in a college game is an incredibly high number. Fouls on Doris Gary. Potential shot and pass it up to get an extra one. There's a shot, no, they save it. And the reason this is so important, BYU loves the speed game. They're so good on the break. If New Mexico doesn't cash in, BYU will. So far, 47% from the field, only turno two turnovers for New Mexico. Miles fumbles it out of bounds, but Apparently it was helped on its way by a New Mexico Lobo, perhaps Ferris. So the ball will remain in possession of BYU. Lee Kumard will put the ball back in play. If this isn't a sellout, it's pretty close. Great crowd on hand. This is what they call a pit game here when they have crowds like this. Kumard in the corner. Lamont Morgan for three. That's the tenth one he's hit this year. He's 10 out of 21, 46%. The pit is really a good test of your maturity, and Dave Rose will have a much better read on his team after this game. Ferris bumping in the lane. He and Miles will more than likely continue to have a physical matchup today. Nate Garth handling the basketball. Freshman point guard who is very, very good. Danrich, Kamar the rebound. Here comes Lee Kumar. Good pass now to Archie Rose. And Kumar connects from three. That's the reason that Dave Rose feels good about himself because Kumar is very consistent. He always gets his numbers, and that's his first basket of the game. Expect more. Garth with Lamont Morgan on him. 19-17, BYU. They've overcome a six-point lead twice. And Will Brown ahead to Nate Garth and Garth the kid out of Sacramento California he'll score once in a while he's VCU earlier in the year at 12 and Daniel Ferris emails that one with 10 9 to go in the first half so Jonathan Wills 
checks in. He's been sick this week. Did not practice yesterday. Steve Alford declaring him healthy enough to go. I think Jonathan probably had something to say about that too. Lamar off the side of the backboard and Garth trying to lead the run out for New Mexico. Topper with Jimmer Fredette back in the game on him. Here's Topper. The jump stop left hand is good. That ends an 8-0 BYU run. Game tied at 19. Wills reached from behind and committed the personal foul. Now Chad Topper has a lot of pressure in this game, not only because you want to beat BYU, but it's his mom's birthday coming up, and, and she said the only thing that she wants is a victory against BYU. And I said, well, have you gotten her anything? And he said, no, and that's why we better win because I'm going to have to go shopping after the game if we don't. Well, his mom, Linda, played basketball here at the University of New Mexico. His dad, Bob, played for the men's team. Yeah. All my mom wanted was a blender. That might be easier to get today. Miles for two. That's one thing, you know, you go get a blender, you're guaranteed yeah. to give her a blender. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty tough opponent. I mean, she might as well have asked for a diamond necklace or something because BYU is tough to beat anywhere. 21-19, two-point lead for the Cougars. Toppert launches. He's got a three. Chad Toppert. Last year in the game at the pit, he went 0 for 5 from behind the arc. So he's ended that string. 127th three-pointer the Lobos as a team have hit this year. An offensive foul is whistled on BYU. And the, the other pressure for Chad Toppert as the separation in the three. He is 0 for 6 in his career against the Cougars. Told me there's nobody in all of college basketball that he would rather be. But that, that charge was a real critical play at the other end because I, I thought it was the correct call, but that could have been his second foul for Ferris. Archie Rose picks it up. Charles Abu is into the game too, a freshman guard. In the Ivory Coast, and there's Ferris. In a double figures with 11 points. Are you getting excited for Luke Neville, Daniel Ferris? Should be good. Saw Luke play on Wednesday against Air Force and with 12 rebounds. Now with Lee Kamard on the bench, who is going to score points here for BYU? Well, they're going to have to rely on Tavanara and Fredette. Fredette resets it with Ramon Martinez covering him. Fredette up and under. Great move. Didn't fall for him. But Jonathan Wills with a basketball for the Lobos. Here's Garth against the Bull. Dishes it off. And Ferris with 13. And the Lobos up by five. Daniel Ferris, season high, was 19 points in their conference opener against UNLV. He was well on his way to meeting that goal. Tavernari steps into the paint and a rebound Martinez. Huh. Dave Rose said the biggest key today is keeping these guys out of streaks. This crowd is up and they're red hot. Charles Abua, the foul, but Daniel Ferris is back. And more important than anything else, if he's making inside shots, the perimeter guys get a much better look. Dave Rose has a special defense in which he double teams the low post. It's called Monster, and I wouldn't be surprised out of this timeout to see the big guys inside get a little double team action. Roman Martinez at the line, fouled by Charles Abua just before the break, and Martinez hits both. 
Here's a little adjustment. A one, two, two. It's just a different look. Why? Because in the last timeout, Dave Rose probably called a set. Good job of switching hands by McGregor. Lays it in with the left hand. 11 to 4, the run currently for New Mexico. Now Daniel Ferris was on the television news in Albuquerque last night saying that his first three years he hasn't beaten BYU. And Chad Topper, same thing. He knocks down another three. Did you see how high he released that jump shot? My goodness. Largest lead of the first half at eight, and now Garth running with Wills. The dish and Topper. Big rebound for Jonathan Wills and Garth from 14 feet short. This is turning into a track meet at times. We've seen runs of 8 0 and 11 2. Each team has had their own 8 0 run. This might be a trip where you try to get the ball to Kamard in isolation. Fredette lays it up and in. That's going to count. So a possible three point play. The foul will be on Nate Garth of New Mexico, his first and the fourth on the team. Yeah, I, I was asking Jimmer about his quick development and what the key is. And, and he said it's his brother, TJ, who's seven years older. And when, when Jimmer was a young kid, his brother would always take him to the playground and he would play with older guys. He would he would check guys that were bigger, stronger, faster, and he had to get real creative to learn how to get his shot off. You can see the results. For a down out of Glens Falls, New York. Gets some cooperation there, completes the three-point play, 31-26. Danridge is back in. Wills will have a seat. Also back in the game for New Mexico is Philip McDonald, the freshman from Cypress, Texas, preseason. Mountain West Conference Freshman of the Year. A lot of great shooters from Glens Falls, New York. You know, Jimmer was number six all time in the state of New York scoring. That that says a lot right there. Well, who were one through five? <laughs> I, I would think Lou Alcindor would be somewhere on that list. Maybe Stephon Marbury. I mean, the list could go on and on. I mean, it could go back for decades and decades. <laughs> My goodness. Sydney Green. Yep. Six turnovers for the Cougars. Only two for New Mexico. And a foul up top. McGregor got a shoulder into Darius Gary. So Gavin McGregor commits the personal foul. Now one of the one of the concerns for Steve Alford's team, how ironic that one of the great free throw shooters in college basketball history coaches a team that is dead last in the Mountain West around 65%. In a close game, that could be an issue. Will Brown hands off to McDonald. That's hard. And that ball is going to be whistled as over and back. And referee Randy McCall said it went off of the knee of McDonald, but the 17,000 plus officials wearing cherry and silver in the stands thought it was tipped by a BYU Cougar. For Denny inside, and he's going to get to the free throw line again. This is a great home court advantage for New Mexico. They, they win many of their games here, but nobody in the country right now has perhaps as good a home court advantage as BYU. They lost one game there this year. That was Wake Forest. But prior to that, they've won 53 straight. And that, that game against Wake, who was number two in the country, at that point is certainly forgivable. Head to head, Jimmer Fredette against maybe one of the best point cards in all of college basketball, Jeff Teague, and Jimmer has no fear. He had 23 points and nine assists, and I saw Teague outplay Ty Lawson for North Carolina. McDonald shot that one over Kamar, Gary the rebound, and Doris Gary fights his way to the basket for two more. Under four and a half minutes to go in the first half. 33-28 New Mexico. BYU with only two losses. One to Wake Forest and one 
A controversial finish at the end against Arizona State. They've been perfect on the road this year for Depp. A little bit long on that one, but a good rebound by McGregor. Jackson Emery in the lane. He is hammered. A blocking foul will be called on Doris Gary of New Mexico as he needs some help. They did a pretty good job getting their fans out to vote, didn't they? I think so. They, uh, it's, it's surprising that Ovechkin, Alex Ovechkin of the Washington Capitals is not going to start <laughs> because of the ballot stuffing that has gone on north of the border. But you know what? That's what happens in an all-star game when the fans vote. You have to expect that. Well, in, in the NBA, Amari Stoudemire started a campaign to write in his name so he'll start over Carmelo Anthony, I guess. <laughs> I guess our priorities are a little different nowadays, aren't they? Jackson Emery. Second shot good. Four-point lead for New Mexico. A little zone defense. This is a bit of a surprise. About 85% of the time, the Cougars are man-to-man. -man. Out of timeouts, they like to come out and mix it up occasionally. Garth gets around the screen from Brown. McDonald with it. Still lots of time to work, but the runner by McDonald counts. <laughs> Philip McDonald is going to end up being a great player in this league. Again, just a true freshman out of Cypress Springs High School in Texas. Going back home to play Texas Tech. Had 17 points against the Red Raiders in his home state. I felt that he's going to be a star in the future. <laughs> it may be there now. And, and don't overlook the defense. I think that Dan Ridge and McDonald have done an exemplary job so far. Lee Kamard is only one for three, and he's the number two scorer in this conference. Somehow, though, I feel by the end of the game, he'll still have his 18 points. You, you, can, you can do a good job against him for a half, but it's very difficult to maintain. Keep an eye on the free throw shooting of BYU. They're six of seven from the line, so they are connecting there. And they've made it a four-point game with just over three minutes left in the half. Danridge right to the bucket and scores. Danridge with six. Boy, he put on an absolute dunking exhibition in the game that we had against Ole Miss. I think he had five dunks in that game. Tavernari checked the floor to make sure he was behind the line, and he connects with his second three ball of the game. Looked exactly like the first basket of the game. And shortly after, Tavernari spent some time getting three more buckets in a row. For the Cougars scramble and take it away, and Danridge picks up the foul. Certainly not one he wanted to pick up. He got a hand in there on Gavin McGregor, and the one-on-one -on -one now is BYU shooting in the bonus. Coming up at halftime, we'll take it to the Mountain Studios where Bill Dolman and Larry Mangino discuss the conference this week, including the big upset in Fort Collins, Colorado State knocking off UNLV. Also, we'll visit the Versus NHL studio. Bill Patrick, Brian Engblom, Keith Jones are there. A couple of big matchups this week, Minnesota and Chicago. And Washington and Ottawa, plus we'll have highlights and stats from our first half of this one. In practice this week, Steve Alford spent an inordinate amount of time working on the, the fundamentals of setting screens. And another foul is called. I am. Um, I'll be on Kamard. I played against Steve Alford in college when I was at Michigan. He was at Indiana. And, and I have never played a game.